Welcome to the Science Business Network. My name is Richard Hudson, and we are at the EU Energy Challenge Conference here in Brussels. I'm joined by David Eiden, the Group Head of Technology of BP. Europe has a particular character of challenge. It's not the same as America or China or anywhere else. So it has particular challenges. It's quite difficult. It doesn't have a massive endowment of, say, hydrocarbon resources. It needs something else in order to satisfy its needs. And so the answer to your question is, um, can technology fill the gap? It can play a part. Give me an example of, what, of a technology that you think really can make a difference in the future on the, on the, the carbon effect and the efficiency overall of oil and gas. Yeah. So if you want, let's pick oil uh, as a starter. If you want to look out into the future, um, you can either go on moving into newer and more difficult parts of the world, Arctic would be a good example of that, and try and capture the next piece of oil there. Or alternatively, you've got large field developments that have already happened around the place, Middle East in particular, and we only get 30-40% of the oil out of the ground. So if we can actually get 60-70% of the oil out of the ground by the advances in technologies, it's called enhanced oil recovery, then we don't need to go anywhere else. We, we can get a lot out of that. And that's one of the big things that we're investing in, low-cost opportunities to get extra oil out of the ground. That's one example of the sorts of things that we do. Another is unconventional gas, you know, actually... Shale gas, otherwise known as. Shale gas, but tight gas is, is quite similar technologies. We've been a big player in this particular field, actually going back as far as the 1950s, um, and this is something we're investing heavily in the ability to better and better extract gas, in particular from uh, shales or tight rocks around the world. So that's more efficient extraction, yeah. but, but is there, are there technologies for energy efficiency in the consumption and the rest that Absolutely. the result could be a lower footprint for carbon dioxide? Absolutely. The, the, the performance of of engines um, has improved by something like 2% per annum over the last decade through better fuels, better lubricants, those are things that we produce, and better engines. In fact, you know, actually over this period when lots of people were hoping that, for example, electrification would improve significantly and to get advantage over the internal combustion engine, what's happened is the goalposts, if you like, have moved over that period. The internal combustion engine has also improved significantly, and we have been playing our part in that. The last technology you mentioned was biofuels. Mm -hmm. What are you doing on that? Well, we have uh, biofuels is actually has been it was the energy business if you go back a few hundred years it really was how the world powered itself and then the industrial revolution came um, but in fact it already ha always has been a big business is how we as humans fuel ourselves um, but we have a big business in brazil it's one of the best places um, on, on 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 this earth to grow biomass it's extraordinary the rate at which it grows and in fact turning that into a transportation fuel uh, is a business that doesn't require uh, major subsidies like you have under the RFS, for example, in America, to compete today. It's almost 50% of the transport fuel pool in Brazil today without, you know, giving it a big, a big leg up, if you like. So it's a viable and profitable business today. And that is the cornerstone, if you like, of our biofuels business. And frankly, you know, Brazil is like the Saudi Arabia of the biofuels or biomass business. So that's the center of our business. And obviously what we're trying to do is to uh, do that very well, but also to get more and more and more out of the biomass that we produce and to grow more biomass per unit of, of, of land that we have there. Thank you very much for joining us, David. Thank you. And thank you.